millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. You filed your taxes. You're feeling pretty good. But now what? Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Gaines. It will expand your brain. Now that you've got money on the mind, talking about taxes, what about taking the rest of March or even April just to get some of your money to do items in motion? That's stuff that you haven't been motivated to do, but you know you should do. And what about that refund? I know I have felt guilty in the past, if I'm going to be really honest with you, when I did get a refund, and of course that's been many, many years ago since I'm an entrepreneur, but when I did, I most certainly did not do something great with that cash. I'm going to be honest with you, I probably took that cash and spent it on something that I don't even know what I spent it on now, but I'm sure it's something that I either sold or threw in the trash or that has absolutely no value in my life now. So that that money, that refund that I would get, it would just burn a hole in my pocket like so super fast. And now life to me is all about balance. A little here, a little there, and you could feel really good about the money decisions you make by putting yourself in a position for success. So this episode was inspired by an Ask Shauna question that came from Greg, who wrote, Howdy, Shauna. By the way, I just love that you wrote howdy. That's just awesome. So howdy, Shauna. So I thought this might make for a good episode. I filed my taxes, but I have no idea what to do now. I know I should probably have some sort of plan in place for the refund I will get. And also, since I'm thinking about money, it makes sense I should also think about some of my money goals, etc. Basically, I'm feeling the need to take inventory and be smart for once. And I'd love to know what you think. Thanks, and I can't wait to hear your ideas. Greg, that's a great Ask Shauna question. And I think that so many people share that same thought of, I filed my taxes. Okay, I've got that done. That's like a big check off for the rest of the year. But what in the world should I be focused on now? And also when you do get a refund, if you're one of the lucky ones, how do you put it to good use? And I started out this conversation talking about balance. And I think that's really what it's about. If you create a plan in place, whether it's for your refund or for your bonus, or whether you get inheritance, or maybe you just get a raise at work or something like that, or you start a side hustle that starts to take off, whatever 
it is for you. To me, it's all about balance. What I mean by that is a little bit of the money goes towards your goals because, of course, those are the things that you're really excited about. Those are the things that get you super happy when we talk about money. A little for you, maybe there's something that you've been just dying to purchase. And who cares whether it's a smart purchase, quote unquote, or not a smart purchase? I mean, seriously, like, how are we defining smart and not smart purchases? Okay, I could give you a few examples, but but by and large, I mean, that's just so incredibly subjective. So I don't even want your brain to go there to live in that space because it doesn't even make sense. But then also a little bit for, for your savings. And I think if you think about anything that happens in your life when it revolves around money and you can come to it with our approach of balance, I have found, personally speaking, that life somehow just gets a little bit more enjoyable. It gets a little bit more interesting to me. I'm able to think I'm a super creative person. So when I approach, especially my money with this balance mentality, I start to be really creative in all the areas of my life. And I don't know, for me, it's it's a secret that's not that secret, but it's really helped me. And it's what I've tried to help share with others along the way, because I think most of us are stuck in this place of not knowing what decisions to make or not knowing how to approach anything. So we just don't do anything. And then that just keeps all of the negative emotions that we have around money just sort of like swimming in this like cesspool. And I'm really about like, let's get rid of the cesspool because it doesn't serve any of us. It didn't serve me in my life. And I have a feeling that it's probably not going to serve you either. So another thing when we're when we're talking about refund because that's kind of the whole thrust of this episode the first place I really look is paying off high interest debt because that is just lingering whether it's credit cards or some other loan you might have and I generally say like high interest is anything above 7% but especially anything above 10% because that's really where the negative effects of having that debt start to compound in a way that makes you frustrated. Like when you have a credit card and the interest rate is, you know, 20 plus percent and it's just you're making these payments every month and nothing seems to be happening. It's because that interest number is so big, it's fighting against you. So every dollar that you're putting on that that debt to pay that off, it's like in this, you know, knockdown, drag out war with you. And unfortunately, it usually wins. So just getting rid of that debt, especially when you come into these bigger chunks of money, is going to help you immensely, not only just mentally, but when you look at your numbers, you're going to start seeing that things start shifting. You start having more money that you can put towards savings or you start having more money for your goals or just to have more freaking fun in your life, right? And then I would say the next place I look is, can I build up my oh crap fund? And my oh crap fund is just another name that I like to call my emergency fund because it really for me is like an oh crap fund when something doesn't work out right or when I look in my bank account and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to have more money in here and somehow it has vaporized, which is usually my clue to uh, get inside my bank account and figure out what in the world is going on. What have I been frivolously spending my money on and how can I remedy or alter this even in just the slightest way? But sometimes it's not possible. Like life happens, things happen. I would say since October of 2018, I have spent thousands of dollars now. I shudder to even tell you the exact dollar amount of trying to figure out how to fix my ear. So for those of you that haven't been listening in October, I became suddenly overnight, woke up one morning and I was 100% deaf in my left ear. Like I can't hear anything, but I have this kind of chronic buzzing, whirling, tinnitus, crazy. I can't even explain it to you sound. So I'm constantly fighting my own brain of not paying attention to that and of staying present. So it's 
it's a nice reminder for me of of listening better and of being more intentional and all of those really important lessons. Because look, if you're going to give me something that was meant to harm me or meant for me to stop doing what I love, I'm going to just turn it into a positive thing. That's something that I've done in my life over and over and over again. It's probably my like means of survival, I guess, if I'm going to if I'm going to be honest with you, but but who cares? It works for me and it makes me feel better, so I'm going with it. But I have spent more money on doctors, nutritionists, supplements, acupuncturists, naturopaths, changing all the products I own into healthy products, changing my diet, working out more. I mean, you name it, I am trying everything because I have this really crazy belief, you can call it crazy, but I'm going to lean into it. <laughs> that I can actually heal myself, that despite what the doctors tell me, that I will probably be deaf in that ear for the rest of my life at this point, that uh, I can somehow repair my body. And even if I repair my body, quote unquote, and I don't get my hearing back, I can be in the most like a kick-ass physical shape. I can be in the most kick-ass like mindset space that I don't even care that I can't hear out of my ear because I am just, I have cultivated myself into a machine that is just running so efficiently. So to me, that's the ultimate goal. Of course, I want to hear again because it's super frustrating if I'm going to be honest with you. I'm saying if I'm going to be honest with you a lot, but (laughs) you're my friend, so I can be honest with you. So it's just been a crazy journey for me. But if I had not had this oh crap fund, you know, I would I would have to go in debt potentially or or be super creative with my finances. But I had this amount of money set aside that I could use to pay for all of these crazy medical wellness health things that I've been trying lately. And that makes me feel really good. It makes me feel good that I took care of myself financially and that I was set up in a position where I didn't have to think twice about it. And some of these things were really expensive. Every time I go to the acupuncturist, it's not cheap. And so if I do that a couple of times a month, I'm looking at well over $500 I'm spending just on that one piece. So knowing that I have this fund that I can pluck money from that is that is also growing. So I have my oh crap fund in a high interest savings account just makes me feel better. And so whatever it is for you, whether you even need the oh crap fund now or not, who cares? Why not just put some of the refund that you get in the old crap fund. And then you just, in the back of your head, you just know it's there. And I guarantee you, it's going to help you feel better. And even if you have your old crap fund at a place where you feel super comfy, comfy with, maybe you just add a little bit more money to it. And then you just feel even better. There is sort of a tipping point though. There is a tipping point of, of too much money that's sitting in your high yield savings account. And this is different for everybody. But there is a point where you, you've, you've saved a lot of money and now your excess money is more efficient used in different ways, whether that is investing in something, whether that is being more aggressive with your retirement accounts, whether that is uh, – there's lots of different options depending on your situation, but there is a tipping point. So you always want to be consciously aware of that too, of like, am I saving just too much? Again, there's nothing wrong with having money saved. I just want to make sure that some of your money is also growing in a positive direction and helping you propel forward. And then lastly, you know, if you owed money this tax season and it's kind of a jump ball, so we're we're all figuring out who's going to owe more, who's going to owe less with the new tax changes, adjust your withholdings, lower them so you can you can even things out so you won't owe money. And another point I I always want to make is just something like food for thought for you to think about. Remember, the goal isn't to get a ton of money back in April. And that's what we're conditioned to think that, oh my gosh, if I get like $5,000 back in April, that's awesome. And, And how much more can I get back? But instead, what I want you to focus on, the goal is to find that sweet spot so you don't owe money, you're not getting a lot of money back. But what that means is, you have more money in your pocketbook every month to work with. So there's more money that's flowing into your your paycheck each month. And then that more money than you can allocate throughout the month. 
better. So that's the goal. To me, that's the sweet spot. And I think if we could maybe just like have a collective change of mind around refund, I think that hopefully people would say, oh, I vote for getting more money in my paycheck every month versus getting back however much I'm going to get back in April, knowing that the statistics point to most people just sort of blow through their refund. I'm not saying everybody does, but that's generally the statistic. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. That's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. 
Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. So the next thing is, what are the items on your to-do list? What are the items on your money to-do list that maybe you've been avoiding or maybe you just didn't have the money to really think about these things, so they sort of have just (laughs) fallen by the wayside? And this happens to everyone, so if you're in this category, just know that you're so not alone. If you would look at my money to-do list right now, you'd be like, all right, geez, Shauna, (laughs) you should get some of these things taken care of. And that's just because I'm in the same boat that you're in, and life takes over, and sometimes you need to use your money for other things, knowing that at some point you need to come back to this to-do list. And it probably would be a smart idea to actually tackle the to-do list. (laughs) So here are some things that I would normally suggest to somebody. And again, these are just food for thought items. If there's something on this that, that triggers your thinking, maybe this is a good place for some of your return. Or if you're sitting on excess cash, maybe you're at that tipping point with your oh crap fund and you've got some extra cash, maybe it might not be a bad idea to to try some of these things. So the first one is a very unpopular topic, which I understand why, but it, I also have seen the immense benefit with life insurance. So people either love or hate life insurance, and that's cool. I totally get it. I have seen working in the financial industry for 15 years, the benefits of life insurance. I have seen it provide immense amount of tax-free cash to people who really need it when something happens to one of their loved ones. So term insurance, it's probably something you're most familiar about. It's the best when you're young and healthy, meaning it's aka the most affordable. There are all sorts of different term lengths, anywhere from 10 years to 20 years to 30 years, a few iterations in the middle, depending on the insurance carrier that you have. But there are places like Haven Life Insurance right now where you can get insurance online super fast, super easy. And I think most people think, well, why would I need 200,000 or 300,000 or half a million or a million dollars of life insurance? Well, if you look at your family situation, whether you have kids or maybe you have a spouse or you're in a serious relationship, if something happens to you, your income is gone, right? And so the extra amount of cash that you can get from life insurance can be used to, in essence, fund the income that is lost or to send your child to college or to pay off a mortgage or to buy a house, whatever it may be. Uh, I don't think you could argue with the if something would happen case and then suddenly someone's going to hand you a check for 200000 or 300000 or whatever that is. And oh, by the way, that money's tax-free. Well, I think that could bring you a lot of relief, a lot of mental relief, because when we lose someone who's super important to us, a spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be, there's this time period where you're seriously grieving. And the idea of going back to work and just fitting in with your normal life is not exactly something that is super fun idea for a lot of people. So the life insurance just buys options. It buys options. And it's really affordable, again, when you're young and healthy. And I think it's not for everybody, but I think for a lot of people, it makes sense to at least explore that option. So if we're going to talk about some of the unpopular topics, I'm going to (laughs) continue on that front, if you'll let me. Uh, I, you might not have thought about it. I've, I've not done a podcast on this in quite a while, but if I ask you what your biggest asset is, you're probably going to tell me your house or your car or something along those lines. Maybe you have like a prized, I don't know, cookbook collection, or maybe you have all the Beatles albums. I don't know, whatever it is for you, but it's actually not. If you think about it, your biggest asset is your paycheck. If you don't have that paycheck, you can't pay for things. And unless you have just won the lottery, most of us need (laughs) some sort of paycheck. So Disability insurance is another item that could be on your to-do list. 
And really what disability provides is a set amount of money if something happens to you and you can't go to work. So you're disabled. There are lots of different scenarios. Some companies offer uh, disability insurance, and this is for long-term disability, not for short-term. So this is if you're disabled 90 days or longer. And really those disabilities are what cause immense financial stress for families, for relationships, because if you're alive, (laughs) but you're disabled and you can't earn money, usually it's, you're going to need some money to take care of yourself. You're going to need some money for whatever medical expenses. And so disability insurance is just, to me, it's one of the, the smartest things to think about, maybe even more so in some situations than life insurance, because your paycheck is your busy, biggest asset. If something happens to you, you need cash, and that's just not ever going to go away. So another thing on the on the to-do list, and I like to do this at least once a year, maybe twice a year, but really inventory what you've got. So your car insurance, your health insurance, your renters or homeowners insurance. See what you've got. See if this makes sense. See if the coverage is still good. Maybe you shop around. Maybe you raise your deductible on some of these. If you raise your deductible, it's going to save you more money, meaning you're going to have to pay less money every month. But then if you need that insurance down the line, then you'll have to pay the higher deductible. But in the meantime, it's saving you more money every month. So it's just a good idea to just scan what you've got. And so many times we just buy something, especially something like car insurance or health insurance or renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, and we never look at it again. We just hope that it's there. I mean, we pay the bills, but we don't actually take an active inventory of it. So that's something that is maybe not so fun to do, but just take like an hour on a Sunday or something when you're just bored and say, you know what, I'm just going to go over what I've got, just make sure it still makes sense. And I'm going to check around see if there's something else that's more affordable out there. Maybe you end up saving money. I mean, that's not the worst case scenario, right? And uh, gosh, wow, I'm just lining up all of the not so fun money to do list items for you. But I think I want to give you a little gentle push with some of these things, specifically if you're getting a refund, or if you have some more cash sitting around, because now is a good time, like Greg was saying, to, to think about money because you're in sort of that tax paying mindset. But it, it's not fun, but important steps like getting a will, getting a trust, maybe an advanced healthcare directive. These are all really important. And those will and the advanced healthcare directive pretty much applies to absolutely everyone. Trust is a little bit different, but uh, you know, it depends on your depends on your situation. But there are companies like Willing and Tomorrow. I'll have all of these links in the show notes. So if you're like, I can't remember any of this, Shauna, just go to the show notes and I'll have the links to this stuff as well. They're great resources. Tomorrow, you can set up a free will. Why would you not do something if it was free? It's not going to take you that much time. I promise you it's not morbid. It's just, why not take care of this stuff and just feel better about it? Feel like you've done something positive today for for your finances. Another popular thing that a lot of people do when they get a refund is home projects. If you own a home, this is... I see so many people that just take the refund and put it in their house, which is a great thing. Specifically, if you're investing some of the the items in your home that have the biggest returns, like kitchens and bathrooms, if you update your kitchen and your bathroom and then you try and sell your house, you usually can get a much higher price tag than if they were outdated because those are the places that oh, just bring everyone so much happiness. Isn't it crazy that we care so much? <laughs> I was thinking about this that we care so much about the bathroom. (laughs) Like that is the place we take a shower and uh, we do all sorts of things to our our poor toilet. Uh, But it's it's only the space that we're in for such a short period of time. 
And yet we go bonkers over bathrooms. And I'm right there with you. If I had an awesome bathroom, like if I go travel, if I'm on in a hotel or something, I'm always like, what's what's the picture of the bathroom? What does the bathroom look like? Is there granite? What does the bathtub look like? What does the shower look like? Are there two sinks? Oh, is the is the toilet in a separate room? I'm just I get so excited over this like really stupid stuff. But that just proves like be, that's that's a good place to invest your money because people actually really care about that stuff. And uh, I, I'm also going to challenge you. I have something called the 1% challenge. And this is, can you up your retirement contributions by 1%? Increase it by 1% two to four times a year. Four times would be awesome and amazing, but two is is really good. Hey, one is awesome. <laughs> But just 1%, 1% each time, because you won't feel it. You're not going to feel it in your paycheck, but your balance will be growing. And that is, the goal is to get you to the maximum retirement contributions. So let's just do it step by step. For for so many of us, doing a big sweeping increase is just scary because you don't know well, what is my paycheck going to look like if I'm already sort of living on the edge or maybe I'm having to be a bit creative with my finances or even if not, even if you have enough money every month, there's still this human thing built into all of us of like, wow, well, now more of it's going to be gone and it really isn't. It's going in another account, hopefully growing in the right direction. But I challenge you to the 1% challenge. Can you step into that? Can you increase your retirement contributions by just 1%. Just see how that feels in your monthly paycheck. And if you look at it and you're like, nah, didn't really, I didn't really notice it, but now my account is growing by more money. Okay, take a couple months and then increase it another 1%. Just keep challenging yourself. And lastly, of course, it wouldn't be a podcast episode with me exclusively without talking about this. Keep an eye on your spending and just look for opportunities daily to save more. It's one of the best ways, whether you're getting a refund or not getting a refund, it's one of the best ways to just stay connected to your finances. Remember, money is just this tool. It's just a tool to help us get the the life that we envision or get us to the goals that we want. That's it. That is it. So turn this from a chore looking at your spending daily into an empowering move. It can be little stuff that you can do smarter. Or maybe maybe it could be bigger stuff, like seeing if you could refinance your student loans or, or call your credit card companies and ask for an interest rate reduction. Just focus on one thing a day. That's it. Because at the end of the day, it's all about balance. And this is not some like BS line I'm giving you. This is this is stuff that I have been working on for years and years and years, way longer than I've been in the financial industry. I've been trying to figure out like what might motivates people around their money and how can we all be just generally in a society better off and a better mindset with our money. It's just about balance. All your goals should be about balance. And, and otherwise you're gonna just you're gonna just burn out. I mean that's why you stop tracking your spending or why you're not motivated by the word budget or or any of these other things that I talked about in the episode. It's because it's out of balance. So remember, so much of this is just a mental game. If you can see money again as a tool and not as a means to your happiness, you can put money in its place and you can make good decisions, but not kick yourself when you want to spend some cash. There's no, like I said in the beginning of the episode, there's no judgment here of what's a good purchase or what's a bad purchase, who cares? It's all about this daily balance and this good mindset that you're cultivating around money so that your life just feels a little bit lighter. Maybe you're not in the money situation that you want to be in right now. Who cares? Just do what you can do today. Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Just do what you can do today. And whatever you do today, even if it's just a tiny, tiny little step, it's going to get you closer and closer and closer to that freedom around financial items. It's going to get you a freedom to tackle your money to-do list in a way that I promise you, you just haven't experienced before. So it's little steps each day, every day, bit by bit. Hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. 
Remember to subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free and you'll make sure you never miss an episode of Millennial Money. You can also listen to all our episodes on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Pandora. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too, and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance, so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value.